The CPU cooler is a very, very important component of the computer because this is actually the component that keeps our main component, which is the brains, or a lot of people like to say the heart of the computer, nice and cool so that it can keep on doing what it needs to do. Now, when looking for a CPU cooler, um, I like to look at the TDP, um, how much space it takes, um, the, I guess, speed, rated speed of the fan or fans that it has, if it has RGB, because I'm a big RGB enthusiast, and if it'll match the system and keep up with the system. Now, this is exactly what we're going to be looking at in today's video, so I really hope you guys enjoy. Now, in order to understand how CPU coolers work, we need to understand something called TDP. So, what is TDP? Well, TDP stands for Thermal Design Points, and basically, it's the maximum amount of heat, I guess you could say, that something can absorb. So, an example would be my CPU, the Ryzen 7 2700X, has a TDP of 105 watts. If I install a 65 watt CPU cooler on it, it isn't going to be able to, pay, to uh, keep up with my CPU. But if I install a 150 watt or a 200 watt uh, TDP CPU cooler, it will be able to keep up with the system just fine. So an example would be the Wraith Prism has a TDP of 105, which matches exactly the TDP of my CPU. Therefore, it is a good cooler. Now, our first candidate is going to be the stock cooler that comes with the new Ryzen series, the AMD Wraith Prism. Coming with four direct contact heat pipes, a TDP of 105 watts, a rated fan speed of 3000 RPM, and some pretty cool RGB. And of course, a really nice black shroud. I feel like this CPU cooler is a nice candidate for this testing. The fact that you're actually able to control the CPU cooler through um, a 4-pin PWM header, and then you're also able to control its lighting through a USB cable, through the Cooler Master software, or a 4-pin RGB header through the motherboard. So this is some real nice customization here. Now, aesthetically, the Wraith Prism is a very, very good looking and just pop out bright cooler, in my opinion. Because not only does the LEDs really give off its design, but then also the blocky kind of shape just matches any um, case and system that it's in. Of course, uh, this CPU cooler wouldn't fit in many ITX builds unless you have a uh, like a mini ITX case that's at least 9 or 10 inches uh, wide inside the case, of course. But overall, this is a very, very nice cooler. And it is a very, very quiet cooler at low load, but at high load, this thing can really make itself known. Alrighty, now moving on to the competitor CPU cooler, the Vetru V5. The box that it came in looks pretty cute, I would say that. It has a nice little drawing showing off the actual CPU cooler itself. Now, the back of the box contains fan info, the CPU cooler info, and the actual CPU cooler compatibility, being AM4 and LGA, obviously. Now, the CPU cooler unboxing was pretty straightforward, just pulling the tab out and moving the flaps to reveal the contents. Now, the contents itself was the CPU heatsink, which actually has five direct contact heat pipes, which is pretty cool. Um, the included RGB fan, the LGA and AM4 brackets to mount on the motherboard, and the fan brackets to mount on the heatsink. So this unboxing was fairly straightforward and nothing out of the ordinary here. Now for $30 we got a heatsink with five direct contact heat pipes, 
an RGB fan that uses a hydraulic bearing, so it might be slightly loud, but that's all right. Um, compatibility with AM4 and LGA, and of course, a little bag of goodies. Now, unpacking this little bag of goodies was pretty straightforward, and the things inside were pretty interesting. Uh, one of the first items was the actual ID cooling thermal grease that came with the CPU cooler. A very interesting LGA backplate, I'll say that. It's definitely not any other backplate, but interesting. Um, the next item that was in here was the actual LGA holder brackets that you screw onto the backplate, of course. Um, the little screws that you use to actually screw the backplate onto the CPU cooler. The fan brackets that you use to actually secure the fan onto the heatsink. And of course, lastly, the AM4 brackets that you use to screw onto the motherboard. Now, the way that I'll be testing these CPU coolers is by going over how easy or how hard it was to install it and testing the cooler's um, efficiency using a software called Cinebench. Cinebench R23 is what uh, benchmarks your CPU by putting an artificial load on it and getting it very very hot and therefore really testing out how the cooler can do. Now after removing and adding on new thermal grease. I use this Corsair uh, TM30 stuff. Um, it was onto the installation of the Wraith Prism. Now, the Wraith Prism was very, very tricky to install. I'll say that. It was very, very tough because the way that it um, gets installed is through like these two holders, I guess you could say, that actually hold on to the little clips on the motherboard, the little black pieces. So installing it was just really a, a real pain, but eventually I got it on there and I plugged everything in where it needed to be plugged in and we were good to go for testing. Alrighty, so temperature rise, the Wraith Prism on an idle temperature, so not doing anything really, had a low of 38 and a peak of 42 at idle, which is pretty nice. And under load at max fan speed had a low of 68 and a high of 72. So it did pretty good. In my opinion, I would say anything under 80 is pretty good for a CPU cooler, but I feel like it could have done ever so slightly better. Alrighty guys, so now it's time for the V5 installation, the Vetro V5. Um, I would say after removing the thermal grease and applying some more, it seemed pretty straightforward at first. You know, just install the correct brackets onto the CPU cooler and then install the CPU cooler onto the motherboard. Now, I would say that this was easy, but it wasn't because of the fact that instead of making like specific areas that you're actually able to reach with your screwdriver, um, it was kind of hard because I had to bend the screwdriver or angle it in a certain way and then I kept on um, kind of scratching the screw instead of actually screwing it in. So they should make like small columns on the sides of the heatsink to make it so that your screwdriver is actually able to go down and reach the screws that you're trying to screw in. But another problem that I had was installing the fan like when it was in the, uh, what do you call it, the motherboard. Now, I understand that you're supposed to install everything on the motherboard first before you actually install it onto the case. But in my case, I had the motherboard already installed in the case because um, it was a little too dangerous to take it back out because of how much work I've already done to it. So 
installation was kind of atrocious, I'll say that, but after eventually getting it installed and plugging in everything that needed to be plugged in, um, we were ready for testing. So now it's time for the temperatures of the Vetri V5. At idling, the CPU cooler had a low of 38 and a high of 49, which is pretty insane, but it might, might have just been something with the CPU. But under load, it had a low of 69 and a high of 72. So the Prism and the V5 are very, very similar in... Um, results, which is insane because the V5 has a 150 watt TDP and the Prism has a 105 watt TDP. But I am pretty um, impressed with this cooler for only being $30. It did about the same as the stock cooler. So I wouldn't say that this is the best upgrade if say that you're uh, Ryzen series CPU came with the Wraith Prism, I would just say stick with the Wraith Prism and not to upgrade to this. But say that you have a Wraith Stealth or a Wraith Spire cooler, um, those have a lower TDP. So I would highly suggest upgrading to this CPU cooler if um, you have that kind of CPU cooler, I guess. But overall, um, yeah, pretty good CPU cooler. I would give it a 7 out of a 10. Alrighty guys, that'll do it for this video. Um, if you stuck around to the end, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate y'all's support. We are very, very close to 50 subscribers. We just need about 30 more subscribers. I'm so excited for that. And I made this video to help you guys out on choosing a good CPU cooler. Now... I will leave links on the uh, on both CPU coolers price in the description below. So if you guys are interested, you could go ahead and check that out. Um, the price may have changed uh, since the time that I bought it. But if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe because it will really support the channel a lot. Um, like the video if you liked it. Dislike if you didn't. And again, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.